Oh, hey. Hi, I'm just getting home from a long day of teaching. I have something to grade. Why don't you join me? Bloop, boop, boop. Bloop, doop, doop. Bloop, doop, 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 doop. <laughs> All right, this time I'm grading Lufia 2 Rise of the Sinistrals. It's always so much faster to grade things when you have something to compare them against, so I'll pull out some other ones. Lufia and the Fortress of Doom would be good. I'll also use Breath of Fire 1, since I compared Lufia against that last time. Might as well pull out Breath of Fire 2 as well. Breath of Fire 1's story was pretty average, so it got a 3. Lufia 1 was even worse, so that got a 2. Not much redeeming about it, really. Breath of Fire 2 was better, though, and it got a 4. Let's see how Lufia 2 stacks up. Hmm. The pacing is actually significantly better than the other three games. Its world isn't as interesting as the two Breath of Fire games, though. I love how the opening of the game explains why money comes from monsters, and that more monsters are showing up and it's worrying everybody. Super efficient storytelling. I like the little segment where you have to watch someone fix a bridge. Nice little callback to Lufia 1. I do have some questions though. Why are there so many towers in this world? Who built them? What are they for? And why does adding lemon to a fish to make it taste better suggest the name the Phantom Fish? Breath of Fire 1's characters were pretty average, except for the surprisingly compelling NPCs, but the characters still get a 3. Lufia 1, oof. Weak across the board, aside from the stronger translation. 2 for that. Breath of Fire 2's characters are better, so they get a 4, but man, that translation is bad. Alright, let's take a closer look at Lufia 2. The heroes are overall pretty great. It's nice that the writing helps you try to see who the characters are right away. Maxim, the main hero, is pretty dense though, and he's got this one really oddly sexist moment. His best friend Guy has much less objectionable about him, but also not much interesting. Salon is pretty cool. I like that she hides her sword underneath her wedding dress, but falling in love with the character she marries happens way too quickly and the game seems to be trying too hard to make you think she's really cool. Artie's great, and I especially like how he talks differently from everybody else. Dakar is a textbook himbo with a total soft spot for the prince of his kingdom, and I love that. But Tia? Best character in the game. The writing for her rivals some of the best Final Fantasy characters. She has a scene with Dakar that is just so perfect. The villains are also a huge improvement over Lufia 1. I like that they have bumbling minor villains, and another minor villain, Idura, is actually a recurring nuisance. The four Sinistrals themselves feel much more like threats in this game too. The NPCs are decent, especially Iris, she's so interesting, and she seems to have implications for all the rest of the Lufia games. Okay, now graphics. Both Breath of Fire games really excel with this. Lufia 1 was nothing special though. How does Lufia 2 stack up? Yeah, the regular gameplay looks really good. I like how the animated slash of a weapon in battle looks different depending on what weapon it is, and also depending on who's using it. Oh, these cutscenes are good too, and they look very consistent to the gameplay. How was designed for these older ones? Oh yeah, both Breath of Fires knocked it out of the park here again. No Super Nintendo RPGs looked as good as the Breath of Fire games did. What about Lufia 1? Yeah, kinda disappointing, nothing interesting about it. And Lufia 2? Oh yeah, an improvement on Lufia 1. But still not anywhere as good as Breath of Fire. The character designs are a huge improvement. The new addition of the capsule monsters are really fun. The towns are basically interchangeable, but the dungeons are probably the best design element of this game. Still a lot of towers though. Alright, sound. This was somewhat of a tricky category for the others. Breath of Fire 1's music and instrument quality were not very strong. Lufia 1 though was even worse. 
Breath of Fire 2 had some issues, especially with loops that were much too short, but it had enough good stuff to balance that out a bit. Oh, and the music in Lufia 2 is pretty good. Strong compositions, hampered a bit by some questionable MIDI instrument choices. This game really loves a harp. These string sounds aren't very good, especially when they're taking the melody. They're fine when they're playing a supporting role. The drums are surprisingly good for the Super Nintendo, though. Okay, last category. Breath of Fire 1 was nothing special, and the few interesting things it had were balanced out by a really awful boss encounter mechanic. Luffy 1? Right, the battles were really terrible in this game. What a chore to play. Breath of Fire 2 was much better, though. It continues the little fun ideas from Breath of Fire 1, but without the annoying boss battle mechanic. And Luffy 2? Wow, this is the strongest of the four by a long shot. The battles are fun with how specific you can get with targeting magic and with the added IP effects. I like how at the end of the battle, the screen shows you how much total money you have, not just how much you gained from the battle. But the real standout here is the addition of the tools and the puzzles. The puzzles are fun brain teasers and are all very solvable until you get to the dragon grass puzzle. That thing sucks. The tools you use for the puzzles all feel significantly different from each other, except for the fire arrow. That thing feels unnecessary. I really like raising the capsule monsters. It's fun to try and get them what they want to eat, and I like that Forfeit Island makes it easy to get most anything they want. Just like toddlers though, they can be really picky eaters and don't always like the things they say they want. The difficulty is just right. It's not too much of a slog to level up if you want to, but you can also avoid a lot of enemies in the dungeons if you want to try and keep your levels low. You can also really challenge yourself with the ancient cave if you feel like it, but challenge isn't really my game. The new game plus feature is clutch. That, plus the fun puzzles, makes picking this game up again for a quick playthrough really worth it. It's a shame the game has such weird bugs though. The equipment names getting messed up as you switch between characters on the menu, wrong characters saying certain lines of dialogue, a few of the place names really getting messed up, and the underwater shrine being so messed up that you can't see anything. At least nothing renders the game unplayable. Okay, so I ended up giving Breath of Fire 1 a pretty average 74%. Lufia 1, oof, was a bit rough. 57%. Breath of Fire 2, though, got a respectable 87%. My rubric gives Luffy a 2 and 83%, but I think the game deserves a 92%. Average those together, and Luffy a 2 gets an 88% or a B+. One point above Breath of Fire 2. Okay, let's see where Luffy a 2 fits in my gradebook. On second thought, it's pretty clear from the moment you turn this game on that it will be a better experience than Lufia 1. It's pretty impressive that it ended up being better than Breath of Fire 2, though. Haha, <laughs> tricked you. I haven't taught since 2021. And, and I know you weren't fooled, I'm just kidding. Uh, but what do you think of Lufia 2 Rise of the Sinistrals? What would give this game some bonus points for you or might take points away from its final score? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to read what your thoughts are. Give this video a like if you liked it, give it a pity like if you didn't like it, make sure you do your homework. And uh, to my side over here, you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you might enjoy, so check that out. Up there is the button to subscribe to us, so please do so if you haven't done so already. So until I see you in the next class, maintain your groovy selves.